Hey, so I just wanted to make a quick note to say that this video, along with all the rest in this super long series, um, these were created back at the end of 2021, beginning of 2022. And um, so you'll hear me talking um, to a specific group of people and they are the wonderful ladies in my private Facebook group called The Branches. And I had done this, um, well, mostly for me, but as also a little something for them, um, for if anyone else was in the same boat I was when um, in regards to salvation and having assurance of salvation. So I hope you enjoy this and um, let me know if you have any questions or want to talk further on the topic. Talk to you later, guys. Bye. Hi, ladies. Welcome back again. Um, we are on chapter four, um, dealing with the sin within, vital sign number two, confession of sin. And we are on week three, day two. That's a lot to remember. <laughs> we are um, moving along here. Yesterday we talked about um, the importance of of God's holiness and and seeing God's holiness and seeing ourselves in the light of God's holiness, um, so that we can see our sinful state because the light exposes the darkness and the light of God's holiness exposes our sin and that's the that's the way we can we can see our need for the Savior and um, be able to come to a true repentance and confession of sin so today we're going to start with the first subheading which is counterfeit Christians beware if someone claims to be a Christian but does not deal with his sin John says that person is not saved. He has no fellowship with God whatsoever. In 1 John 1 6 it says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Those who say they have fellowship with God claim to be Christians. They verbally confess Christ, professing to know him. But, if their lives remain in darkness, if they live in disobedience and unconfessed sin, they are lost. Regardless of how sincere they may be, such a claim to be a Christian is a sham. Because this person is in the darkness, he cannot see the sin of his own life nor realize his lost condition. The darkness blinds him to the reality of his unconverted condition. If you don't walk in the light of God's holiness, it is a sure sign that you have never believed in Jesus Christ. If one's walk does not match his or her talk, such a confession is a lie. No matter how much a person may claim to know Christ, if he remains in the darkness, he is separated from God, oblivious to his lost condition. And I was there at one time. Um, I remained in the darkness. I claimed Christ, but um, I lived in habitual sin. And it didn't affect me. And I would never thought about it. And so I surely didn't confess it. I was in the dark. Um, and it wasn't until God shone his light on me and um, revealed my sin to me that I was able to to re come to a true repentance and turn away from that sin and um, try in my best to walk in, to keep a walk in the light, um, which is our next section. It's called Walking in the Light. By contrast, the one who is truly converted to Christ gives evidence of this reality by walking in the light. This person has entered into true fellowship with Christ as a result of the profound awareness of his own sin. It is the knowledge of sin which drives him to Christ for cleansing. John writes in 1 John 1 7, But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, 
cleanses us from all sin. Walking in the light represents a habitual lifestyle of living in personal holiness. The metaphor of walking implies an ongoing process over an extended period of time. It suggests movement, direction, and one's behavior. Walking in the light pictures one living in God's truth and holiness on a regular, consistent basis. Lest there be any misunderstanding, this speaks not of the perfection of one's life, but the direction of it. As one walks in the light, the deeds of darkness are exposed, leading to the confession of sin. It is only in God's light that one can see his own sin and properly deal with it, seeking forgiveness. The one who walks in the truth of God's holiness ready confess, readily confesses his sin and receives daily cleansing with Christ's blood. Next is the great cover-up. Unfortunately, many who claim to be Christians have never forsaken their sin. They continue in their sinful lifestyle as if nothing is wrong. It is of these pretenders that John writes. In 1 John 1 8. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Amazingly, this self deceived person claims to have no sin problem, remaining blind to the depravity of his own life. Although God says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, in Romans 3 23. This person denies it. Sin? What sin? He just doesn't see it. It's not that he thinks he is too bad to be saved, but too good. Unfortunately, his morality may keep him out of jail, but it will not keep him out of hell. How can someone be so self-deceived? It is because he has never seen himself in the light of God's perfect holiness, which alone can reveal his sin. As long as he remains ignorant of God's holiness, he cannot see the truth about himself. This self-righteous one is always comparing himself with others and concluding he is acceptable to God. Of course, he measures himself by someone who is outwardly immoral and concludes he himself must be right with God. The counterfeit Christian is wrapped in a cloak of self-deception Believing he is saved, he is tragically lost. And then the last um, subheading for today is called No Place for Truth. Regarding such a person, the truth is not in him, John concludes. He may not, he, or he may have gone through the empty motions of a so-called religious conversion, but he has never been born again. The truth about his own sin is not to be found in him. That's because the truth about God's holiness is sadly missing. No one can be saved until they know they are lost. Jesus died for sinners, not self-righteous people. Until a person sees his own wretched sin, he can never be saved. Not until he sees the depravity of his own soul will he flee to Christ for cleansing and forgiveness. A great preacher was teaching on the subject of depravity. At the end of his sermon, a listener approached him and said, I can't swallow what you say about depravity. That's all right, the preacher responded. It's already inside of you. Such is the problem of all humanity. The defilement of sin is already within us. Like the venom of a deadly snake, the poison of sin is pulsating through our mortal flesh and must be treated. If we fail to deal with this sin, with the sin within us, we shall perish and be eternally lost. And I just, I, I hope and pray that you guys will think about these things. Um, because I know this is something that I, 
when I was first claiming to be a Christian, these are things that I didn't consider. So, um, and it is kind of um, alarming and hard to take in um, at first when it's when it's thrown at you. But um, I just pray for open hearts and um, that we all, um, even those of us, all of us, even me, all of us, um, really take a look at this and. Um, and, and just examine our lives and are is there any unconfessed sin um, in our lives right now that we need to, to hand over to God and um, and turn from so um, and and just don't allow yourself to be deceived um, when he said in that verse if we say we have no sin we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us there are, I don't know if you've seen them, there are a lot of videos from Ray Comfort and um, how he goes about uh, um, exposing people's sin. He first asks them if they think they're a good person. And darn if most of, if not all, they say that they are a good person. So um, I think we all feel that way about ourselves. Um, or we all have at one point in time <laughs> until God's light has shown in our lives and we realize, oh, we're not so good after all. But um, there's a lot of people out there that they believe they're truly a good person when God says no one is good, no one but God. And um, so, and not, I guess that's one example. And I've also seen the examples of... Um, even preachers, um, they're false preachers nonetheless, but that have claimed to be sinless. Once they've, um, they became a Christian, they say they're sinless and they have no sin. Um, you can look at that verse in that light too, I think. And, and he says, if we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. Um, even at conversion, after we've converted and we've been born again, we're not going to be perfect. We're not going to be sinless. Um, but our sin, it does need to be um, confessed. We need to turn from it and um, trust in the blood of Christ to cover it for us. We are covered in his righteousness and his alone. There, We have no righteousness. So... Um, there's just a couple of, of points I wanted to make on that, and um, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and come back for some more tomorrow. Uh, again, I love you guys, and take care. Bye.